Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is Introduction to SAS Statistics. In this lesson, we'll be covering model selection, which is the fifth lesson of six lessons in this lesson set. If you haven't seen the previous four, I recommend that you check them out. And we're going to be covering model selection, which is a fairly complicated topic. We're just going to be showing you the basics in this lesson, which are still extremely useful. But I recommend that you dive a little bit further or watch some future playlists that I'm going to put together that cover some more complicated components of model selection. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to first thing going to do is go to help, go learn programming. We're going to load a bunch of different data sets here. And we're going to go ahead and get started here. So we're here, we're going to be covering linear regression. So the data set that we are using is in the act library that was newly created and it's called fitness. And then our model, which I have copied down already, is going to be this one, which is basically runtime and it's going to be regressed against all of these explanatory variables. And then what we're going to do here is our model selection is we can either use backwards, forward, or stepwise. So backwards means remove, start with all the components of the model and then remove components, or forward, which is start with no, with just the intercept, and then add on and see until you've reached a certain significance level or none of the explanatory vari variables have been been left out uh, meet the ex ex uh, the threshold so then here we're, but stepwise allows us to go forward and backwards so it's usually the superior model but sometimes it takes a little bit more especially if you know which direction you want to go so let's go ahead and get started at the top I should put a title but that's fine so you'll see here here's the model with just one explanatory variable in addition to the intercept which is the oxygen consumption so that's good, that's interesting. You'll see the R squared here, the CP statistic, which is good. And then you're gonna go down, you're gonna see the R squared actually increases after we add in not only oxygen consumption, we add in performance. You'll see here the p-values, the statistics, and we're gonna keep running it through. It's gonna add in age, okay, increase the R squared, add in, increase the CP statistic, and we're gonna, keep, we're gonna keep adding it. And you'll see it's gonna add in weight as well. So that's good, and you'll see here it says all mo all variables left in the model are 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 at significant are at the level. There's no models left that are below this significant level. So that's good. That's interesting. And uh, if you see here that they've basically added in four additional variables, but we started with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we excluded three of them. So that's good. Uh, but we can't actually see the details or how they actually came to the logic. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add details all which is really useful. You can either add the summary or just the step components, but I like adding all just so you can see all the details. It's not recommended when you're showing somebody necessarily, especially if they don't care about the, the details. They just care about what the final model look like, but this is a, a really helpful way of looking at it. So here, it's gonna show you all the models, that all the variables that are eligible to be added in for entry. And basically it's gonna pick the one with the, the highest the highest F value or until it reaches the component where the the P value is less than 0.1 or greater than 0.15 for the statistics for entry. You'll see here it's now added that component in. Well, that's good. Um, and then you go step and you some of you ask, uh, maybe asking why don't we just add the intercept because intercept is just going to be remember how they for the R squared how it's calculated it's the basically it is the one minus the total residuals, right? B using the mean minus what the residuals are left with this new model divided by the the total residuals from the the mean of of the y-intercept. In this case, that would be one. Uh, that'd be zero because it'd be the same number over the same number. So that's why they don't include the r squared for no explanatory variables. In case you're wondering, which should be pretty intuitive. And then you'll see here now the P F F is the highest for performance. So it's going to add that one in. That's good. And you'll see here now it's included age. So you'll see here the advantage of not just adding it in order is because you'll see here that the age is actually has a pretty low um, F statistic. But when you get here, it's uh, probably an age jumps up in really high components. And that may be an indication that 
for example, that there's a lot of, which is probably pretty likely, that there's a lot of interaction between performance and, say, for example, rest pulse, because it's probably pretty highly highly correlated within each other. So there's a lot of um, interaction between those variables. So that's the reason why age really sticks out. And you'll see, you'll keep going, and it's going to get to here. Statistics for model entry, so it's not going to drop any here. It's uh, and it's going to add in weight because it's the next component. You'll see the R squared improves, and it'll keep running through, and you'll see all those details. So that's good. That's interesting. Really helpful. Really useful for selecting your linear regression model. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to be working with um, the logistic regret model that we built it last time so here i'm going to import the data so obviously you have to change this data file format uh, which i'll include a link in the description to where you can download that file and then you'll see here we're just going to run this so we have this data set and now we're going to be running proc logistic data equals work.bank uh, plots equals all so we're not going to plot anything uh, normally you should you should plot something and then we're gonna be including a bunch of different variables so here we're gonna be including uh, marital status so we're gonna say ref is equal and then we're gonna set the reference the baseline equal to single default harm so this is whether or not someone's defaulted and we're gonna put no as the baseline and I'm gonna huge education with no baseline and then I'm gonna go units age is equal to five balance is equal to 1000 so this will tell us how to increment within the model so here i'm going to go y and i need to set the event in this case we're, we're modeling for when someone actually does take the term loan if you have if you don't know what i'm talking about just check out my previous video and then as well we're going to include all the, the various interactions so these interactions are going to be indicated by this vertical bar so that's good, handy, default. And then here, we're gonna go selection, stepwise, and to actually see the details, what we need to do here is we need to include details. We're not gonna go details equals uh, whatever, because this proc step is different. Let's go ahead and run it. So it takes a little while because there's many steps to, to this because there's many different components. And you'll see here, the size of this uh, output is quite large. And we're gonna go up to the, near the very top. So you'll see here, it makes up more than two thirds of the output now compared to when we ran the linear regression stepwise model selection twice. So you'll see here, this should look very familiar if you've seen the previous lesson. It talks about the class levels, so that's good. It sets the unknown at all these minus ones as opposed to zero. If we were to set the default and you'll see here a bunch of different components understanding the model and then you'll see here analysis effects eligible for entry so you'll see all these different variables that are included which marital status uh, balance age education default so you look through here so first thing it's going to add through because the the chi squared is highest for education it's going to add that one in first so it's going to go ahead and add it in. It's going to show you what the, the model looks like across these different components. Normally, if you would add in plots, it would have included those, those um, odd ratio impact, which is actually really interesting to look at as well. And now it's going to uh, no effects for this model. Step Y, one was removed. So basically, nothing was removed from this model after step one, which makes sense. And then you'll see here, uh, marital status is going to be added in next. So you're going to see here all these different components because of all the interactions, all the different components here. You'll see the confidence level in impacts. You'll see here that uh, tertiary versus unknown is uh, actually not statistically significant, which is gets kind of uh, kind of expected uh, when you don't know what the education is. Uh, they probably don't have very much of an education. Well, tertiary would tell you that they, as well, it's probably a very similar population. So that's why you don't see it being statistically significant. And you're going to keep running it through. Uh, eligible for entry. Again, you'll take a look. You'll see here it's it's likely going to add in. Uh, where, where is this? Oh, okay, yep, up here. It's probably going to add in age next. Right? So you'll see here. 
So it's going to add an age. It's going to show you the impact. It's going to show you the effects. That's good. That's really interesting. It's going to keep going through. And you'll see here that the C, which tells us when it does these uh, pair coordinate, discoordinate, whether or not they guess correctly, uh, you'll see it keeps it improving. But you see it somewhere over time. That's interesting. Uh, you'll keep going and you'll see here it's going to keep running through uh, and all the L models are eligible. Let's go down to the very bottom because it, you saw that it had many different steps to it. Uh, and you'll see here that the C has gone up to 0.628, which is good, a good sign. And you'll see here all the models that were end up being selected, uh, what, were, what was removed and what was entered. In this case, all of them were entered and the, num the order in which they were entered. So you'll see here, that's good. That's interesting. So you'll see now we have this final model, which tells, in this case, I think it added everything in, uh, but still, it's still really useful. It's still really interesting and uh, still useful. Well, actually, no, it still had all these various interactions that weren't, weren't added in. Uh, and that makes sense uh, because some of these probably have uh, high re relationships within each other. So that's good. So if there's any other questions, comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Model selection is a very complicated topic, but can be really useful. Helps you build out a more parsimonious model. And as well, that's one that's still effective, but still elegant and beautiful. And that's a really important part of statistics. And sometimes you can get lost in trying to add in too many components to your model to try to help explain or how, help reduce it, uh, but it then makes it really more difficult to interpret and to understand. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free, free, free to leave it in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe, and I look forward to speaking to you next time.